Welcome to the Alaska Weather Show. I'm meteorologist Peter Chan coming to you from the National Weather Service on this Wednesday, April 26, 2023. And if you'd like additional weather information on top of what I provide, you can go to weather.gov. That is the National Weather Service's primary online presence, and it'll bring you to a map of the continental U.S. with Alaska, Hawaii uh, to the lower left. And if you point and click anywhere on this map, it'll pull up a forecast with any relevant watches, warnings, or advisories for anywhere in the country. There's also all sorts of other weather information you can find out uh, by going to the site, air quality, uh, satellite imagery, radar, uh, various other interesting meteorological and hydrological uh, information. On the map this uh, Wednesday afternoon, looking at uh, the lower 48, we have frost advisories and freeze warnings for the lower Great Lakes, southern lower Michigan, down into the northern Ohio Valley. We have a severe thunderstorm watch along the east coast of Florida and a tornado watch there in central Texas, further to the north and west portions of the Sierra Nevada and up around uh, areas of eastern uh, Idaho experiencing flood watches as a result of snowmelt flooding. Here in Alaska, we're going to see some periods of rain and some higher elevation snows along the Gulf Coast and Panhandle pretty much uh, now into through the early part of next week. And uh, that could lead to some increased snow melt along some of the uh, coastal areas and an enhanced risk for some isolated uh, perhaps avalanches. Temperatures are going to be warming, especially across the panhandle by Saturday, back up into the upper 50s to even some lower 60s. And that warming will extend farther north. We could see temperatures back up around 50 and through the central interior, especially at Fairbanks starting on Saturday. Overall, though, we're still going to see temperatures average below to near normal through the first week of May, which will continue to delay heavier snow melt and river breakup. Nevertheless, there's some signs that maybe once we get in the second week of May, we could see uh, some above normal temperatures setting up, which would then accelerate that snow melt and trigger uh, the initial river breakup. So stay tuned to later forecast. As far as a uh, quick check of a couple of the FAA webcams this afternoon, way up in the north, uh, we find uh, skies there generally cloudy with some flurries at Akasuk at a temperature of five above. There's still some temperatures along the Arctic coast a bit below zero. Further south along the northern Gulf Coast, uh, Cordova overcast skies sprinkles temperatures near 40. And uh, the areas along the Gulf Coast will be picking up some periods of uh, rain here uh, as we go through uh, the next several days. Not raining all the time, but nevertheless, uh, that moisture will be present as the mid and upper level pattern begins to change. We have some very cold air right now that's out across uh, the North Slope and Arctic Coast. That cold air is going to retrograde back toward the southwest, passing through the Bering Strait and then dropping down across the uh, central Bering Sea. And then as it does so, it's going to allow temperatures to uh, moderate uh, warm closer to normal, especially across uh, southern southeastern areas of the mainland and down through the panhandle as we go through the weekend. Otherwise, no watches, warnings, or advisories currently in effect uh, for anywhere in the state. Could see some gale force winds this evening in the north central Gulf, but aside from that, nothing uh, too terribly exciting. We do have a couple of areas. Uh, one low pressure system, the most noted one. One there is south of Kodiak Island. You can see the curl in the clouds. There is another low back toward uh, just uh, southwest there of Kuskokwim Bay. And then way to the north, there's a very weak circulation up toward Utkiadvik, uh, associated with a trough of low pressure there along the northwestern coast. Uh, but otherwise, the systems are not especially strong. And as we uh, go into uh, Thursday, that low that's currently south of Kodiak Island will be lifting up into the western Gulf. And that is what will uh, allow for uh, rain to spread along the Gulf Coast with some snow in the higher elevations there of the coastal mountains. So low pressure uh, this Wednesday afternoon, a 984 located south of Kodiak Island that's lifting northeastward with a frontal system, primarily an occluded front. We have some lingering troughs of low pressure and weaker areas of low pressure out over the Yukon. Uh, also there in through the area 
uh, along off of the southwest coast in the southeast corner of the Bering Sea, and then another weak low up along the northwestern coast. Heaviest precipitation is now entering the southwestern Gulf uh, ahead of that 984 low. For later tonight into early Thursday morning, moderate to briefly heavier rains will be pushing up into areas of the north central Gulf Coast and along the outer panhandle, so that by Thursday afternoon that occluded front will be pushing up in through the panhandle, extending with a weaker, weakening low back along the eastern Kenai, and then also a, a weaker low there uh, around uh, Kuskokwim Bay by Friday afternoon, uh, lingering general trough of low pressure sitting along the west coast out through uh, the lower southeastern quadrant of the Bering Sea. Colder air is going to be pulling back out over the central Bering Sea that was originally up along the Arctic coast. And then another low uh, in a stalled out front through the Gulf is going to produce uh, some more areas of um, moderate rain pushing into areas of the northeastern Gulf Coast uh, by the time we get into Friday. And uh, again, this moisture stream will be present as we go into early next week as well. But temperatures are going to be warming across the panhandle. Thursday morning lows above freezing there in the panhandle near or a bit above freezing south central, especially coastal areas. And then Thursday afternoon highs will generally be kept down in the 40s to around 50 degrees in the panhandle due to cloud covers, showers. Further uh, west, though, across south central areas, we should be able to get temperatures back up in the mid 40s. Average highs now for this time of year, south central areas are near or a bit above 50. Not going to be there yet, and Friday morning lows generally above freezing across the, much of the region except for Copper River Basin up toward Telkeetna. Friday afternoon, temperatures uh, warm into the 50s across much of the Panhandle, even 61 there uh, around Craig and uh, areas. Uh, that warmer air is going to creep northward. We can see some lower 60s all the way up toward Haines and Juneau by Saturday, uh, and temperatures will continue to moderate over south central areas as well through the weekend. Cold air there across the north slope, Thursday morning lows near or a bit below zero. Uh, temperatures along the Yukon and River there southward above 40, but still some single digits. The coldest air beginning to spill and pull back toward through the Bering Strait. Friday morning lows still near zero along areas of the North Slope and along the Arctic coast. For Friday afternoon, we anticipate uh, temperatures continuing to moderate a couple of few degrees warmer there along and south of the Yukon River. Trying to approach 50 there uh, at Fairbanks by Friday afternoon, having, I think, greater success there and over toward uh, Eagle by the time we get into Saturday and Sunday. And temperatures will continue to moderate a bit there across the far north along the Arctic coast, not nearly as cold as what it has been here uh, this past uh, several days. And then across the southwest interior, 20s for lows uh, and daytime highs Thursday afternoon, back up around 40 as you go up the Yukon and Kuskokwim River basins, lower 40s down along the Alaska Peninsula. Friday morning lows generally in the 20s, still getting below freezing, that freeze-thaw cycle. And then Friday afternoon, we do anticipate some temperatures to get back up into the 40s now, especially as we go up through uh, the mid and upper uh, Kuskokwim Basin and lower 40s there down along the Alaska Peninsula in through the eastern Aleutians. So the 6 to 10 day temperature outlook for May 2nd through the 6th is calling for below normal temperatures to continue centered on south central areas around Cook Inlet. Uh, still, that would place temperatures at times up around maybe a bit above 50 degrees, but no big surges of, say, 60 degrees. And temperatures will moderate and warm and be closer to normal in the far north as well as areas of the panhandle. Now, precipitation-wise, as low pressure trough just kind of sets up over the Bering Sea, that's going to allow for more of a south-southwesterly flow aloft that will keep some precipitation going at least through early next week along the Gulf Coast. Uh, there is the potential for precipitation to average a bit above normal across the mainland as we go into the first days of May. Uh, no real strong positive anomaly to signal a heavy precipitation event. Nevertheless, enough just to keep some moisture and precipitation going across portions of the state, not as dry as what maybe we would normally expect for this point transitioning into the month of May. But the main thing is we're still going to see the river uh, break up and the more significant snow melt delayed now until at least the second week of May. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. 
On to flying weather, IFR, North Slope and Arctic Coast for Thursday morning, VFR, Interior Alaska. And then farther to the south, we've got some areas of IFR from the uh, central Bering Sea there and one over the southeast Bering, extending to the Alaska Peninsula, Togiak Bay area, and more IFR, northern Kodiak Island, Fognak Island, North Gulf Coast, right into the Panhandle along the coastal areas, marginal VFR over the central inside waters. Good VFR north of the Alaska Range with some marginal VFR and along and south of the mountains there, extending down into across the western Copper River Basin. And you can see the IFR there into far eastern Turnigan Arm. And from there for the afternoon, we've got uh, still IFR there, Prince William Sound, North Gulf Coast, now all of the southeast coast and IFR for the central and eastern Arctic coast. Another zone of IFR there for the Yukon, Cuscombe Delta, mostly out along the coastline covering Nunavak Island, and then across northern Togiak Bay there into the southwest mountains. And marginal VFR for most of the Aleutians northward to the Pribilof. So now marginal VFR showing up over the northern Bering Sea across western St. Lawrence Island to the Bering Strait. And for Friday, IFR, Yukon Delta to Nunavak Island, marginal for the Pribilofs and the Aleutians to the Western Alaska Peninsula. And some marginal VFR in over Kodiak Island, most of Shelikoff Strait, now a band of IFR along the eastern and southern slopes of the west central and western Alaska range. IFR, North Gulf Coast, and uh, areas of the Panhandle with VFR north of the Alaska Range, extending across the Kobuk, Koyukuk, and Upper Yukon Valleys, northwestward to the Noatak Valley, including Point Hope and Cape Lisburn, Kivalina, and Red Dog. For Friday afternoon, areas of VFR in the interior with areas of marginal VFR as well. Marginal VFR for the Arctic Coast, North Slope, mostly open VFR. Bering Sea, pretty solid Friday afternoon on the marginal VFR from the Northwest Coast, Seward Peninsula, all the way down to the Aleutians and Alaska Peninsula covering Bristol Bay, Yukon Cuscombe Delta into the Cuscombe Valley. And then some areas of uh, VFR, South Central Alaska and the Copper River Basin, Eastern Interior still holding good, uh, even the Central Interior, good VFR, but IFR still over Eastern Turnigan Arm, Prince William Sound, the North Gulf Coast in the northern half of the Panhandle, and also some IFR near and just south of Adak and Atka. And a Tuvik, marginal VFR at times tomorrow for the uh, Brooks Range, those two passes anyway, either approach, especially on the north side and in the afternoon. Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal VFR, marginal at times for rainy on Thursday. And windy, VFR, we'll go uh, back to marginal for Isabel. And Mintasta looks marginal, especially on the southern entrance, probably VFR on the north side. Tanita, marginal VFR, either approach tomorrow. And for Portage, IFR, Chilkoot and White, uh, not too bad, IFR flying, uh, well, not, not too good, IFR conditions there for both those passes tonight through tomorrow and probably into the next day as well. Uh, freezing levels at the surface now, northward in the Bering Sea there to just about St. Matthew Island, so that puts it well north of the Pribilofs and up across Cuscoquam Bay and into uh, northern Susitna Valley, northern Copper River Basin, and north of the Panhandle, 2,000 feet down toward Dixon Entrance. And from there, taking a look at the jet stream, or no, icing. Best chance of any significant icing will be over the Panhandle tomorrow. Uh, could be some isolated moderate rime between six to 12,000 feet in that area. Otherwise, no significant icing expected anywhere else over the state. Jet stream, uh, upper level trough along the west coast to the Alaska Peninsula, and that puts southwest flow 150 knots across the northern panhandle, lighter out to the west, but northerly is up to about 70 knots coming through the central Bering Sea. And at 9,000 feet, southwest 40 to 60 knot winds blowing into the southeast coast. And uh, pretty light over the interior, even at 3,000 feet, light winds, although they pick up maybe 30 knots or so along the northwest coastal areas, Point Hope, Cape Lisbourne, south 35 knots across the central and northern panhandle. And then those 40 knot winds there from the Bering Strait across St. Lawrence Island. And turbulence wise, look for uh, isolated moderate turbulence there for the uh, Western Arctic coast down across the Northwest coast, southward to St. Lawrence Island, as well as areas of the Northern Panhandle. After the break, I'll be back with the marine forecasts. 
kind of hard to explain how important weather is to our job. I mean, it really affects everything we do. In 2018, NOAA launches the GOES-S satellite, which takes its place in orbit as GOES-17. Working together with GOES-16, the two new geostationary weather satellites will provide constant watch over the United States and the Western Hemisphere, from the west coast of Africa all the way to New Zealand, helping monitor severe storms, wildfires, and daily weather patterns. Since its launch, NOAA's GO-16 satellite has already demonstrated its critical capability for keeping our nation weather ready. Throughout the active 2017 hurricane season, GO-16 delivered imagery with detail and clarity never achieved before, with four times greater resolution than previous NOAA satellites, and delivered this imagery faster than ever before, helping forecasters predict the path of a storm and where and when it will intensify. These accurate and timely forecasts allowed for emergency managers to prepare for evacuations, map flood areas, and save lives. So the weather matters. Uh, the weather matters before the weather happens, and the weather matters after uh, the event happens, because what we're able to do to prepare, uh, allocate resources, uh, provide information to the public through the media, uh, beforehand and what we're able to do afterwards, how uh, and when the waters are going to recede so we know we can get vehicles with life-saving food and shelter equipment uh, down a particular highway. All of that depends on the forecast. In the GOES West position, GOES 17 will be able to provide critical data for the westernmost United States, Alaska and Hawaii. We're talking about getting data updates in just seconds so we can quickly spot wildfires and closely monitor the wind direction and their intensity. The crispness of the data coming in at a faster rate will also help with fog forecasts. We can see the moment the strata starts to develop or when it starts to move out. Like GO-16, GO-17 carries a suite of advanced instruments, including tools for sophisticated earth sensing, lightning detecting, solar imaging, and space weather monitoring. As an equal partner in the sky, GOES-17 will expand coverage of the advanced baseline imager technology across the Pacific Ocean, allowing meteorologists and local officials to see severe weather systems developing in real time. So instead of seeing something, say, this large, that as you zoom in, actually gets kind of blurry, you're actually gonna see something that is much more detailed. In its GOES West position, GOES 17 will be able to monitor conditions in the western U.S. like wildfires, coastal fog, and atmospheric rivers when storms from the Pacific dump heavy rain and snow over the western U.S. GOES 17 will have a major impact on fighting wildfires in California. Up to the minute information in crisp detail allows forecasters to spot fires faster than ever before, even before the first 911 calls come in, and to better track and predict the path of large, dynamic, and dangerous fires. It's amazing to see what we can get uh, and at the level of detail and the speed uh, that we can get the information down into the ground that makes our decision making. Uh, way more accurate. With a view of the Pacific Ocean, GOES-17 will also provide a critical eye over shipping lanes vital to the U.S. economy, protecting cargo and passenger vessels from dangerous ocean storms. GOES-17 will also provide a high-definition view over Alaska, resulting in better weather forecasts and improved monitoring of sea ice, wildfires, and volcanic ash. The advanced baseline imager on GOES-17 can distinguish between clouds, sea ice, and snow cover, a critical need during Alaska's dark, cloudy winter months. GOES-17's geostationary lightning mapper monitors lightning flashes, including the in-cloud lightning most prevalent in severe storms, helping forecasters determine when a storm is forming, intensifying, and becoming more dangerous. Thanks to GOES-17, emergency managers will be equipped with more accurate weather predictions and faster warnings, providing a real impact, saving lives, and protecting infrastructure. Watching over Earth from 22,300 miles above, GOES-S will provide vital data to our weather-ready nation. I'm JPSS. I'm a high-tech weather satellite that orbits our planet. 
I do something called a polar orbit. I circle the Earth from North Pole to South Pole, over and over, while the Earth spins. While I do that, I get lots of information about what's going on around the globe. I watch storms, clouds, and rain. I take the temperature of the ocean, measure air quality, ozone health, and take pictures of the land and sea. This information is used for all kinds of things. It helps us take care of our coasts and oceans and all the amazing things that live there. It helps us monitor harmful weather events like floods and droughts and measure the health of the environment. Most importantly, it helps us predict weather three to seven days in the future. That means I can be a big help ahead of storms where future warnings are important. I send information to the National Weather Service. They use the information to create forecasts. The forecasts are shared with people all over the country to help prepare for weather emergencies. So you look to the sky and wave. I'll be flying by. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. It's now time to look at your sea ice edge before we get into the marine weather forecast. Uh, well, we are starting to see now the ice opening, some areas of open water, Linnea's there, especially just off of the shore fast ice along the northwest coast uh, from Utgadvik down to off of Wainwright Point Lay and Cape Lisbon, as well as Cape uh, or Point Hope. Also areas opening up now south of the Bering Strait, as well as in through a large portion of eastern, northeastern Norton Sound. And the ice edge is melting off here across uh, areas of the southwest coast in through the central Bering. There was one last gasp with those colder northeast to north winds we had over the previous week. And since then, now we're just reached that point in the season with high sun angle and gradual increased insulation, warmer temperatures. This ice is uh, losing its grip and breaking up and uh, melting off along, especially the edges there. And we expect this trend to continue, though a push of colder air is going to rotate back south and westward through the Bering Strait and out over the central Bering as we go through Thursday and Friday. That may be the last gasp. Uh, of Arctic air, late season Arctic air are finally going away. Here across the southeast panhandle, winds will be south southwest or south southeast, 25 knots waves, uh, generally around five, six feet with some gusts up to 40 knots there. Stevens Passage, the outer Gulf Coast, winds generally from the south southeast around 25 knots with waves running anywhere from 12 to 16 feet for Thursday on Friday. South winds continue up there through Lynn Canal with three foot waves, but winds turn northerly uh, mid channels down through Ketchikan uh, uh, with winds out of the north at 10 knots, waves two to three feet. The outer uh, Gulf Coast generally retains southeasterly winds 15 to 20 knots and waves running right around 9, 10 feet. Northwestern Gulf will see northeast winds 15 knots within Prince William Sound with waves of two to three feet. Off the Kenai, winds will be northerly 20 knots with waves of 6 to 8 feet. And then lower Cook Inlet, a mix of winds onshore near Anchor Point, 10 knots. But southerly, 15 knots there at the entrance with waves 2 to 3 feet. For Friday, winds will be light southeast 10 knots with 2-foot waves in Prince William Sound, variable up on the north end of Cook Inlet. Uh, southeasterly at the entrance of Cook Inlet at 15 knots with waves of 4 to 5 feet. Across the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island, on Thursday, winds will generally be southwesterly around 15 uh, to maybe as high as 20 knots. Waves three feet within Shelikoff Strait, five to six feet on the North Pacific side, and two to as high as five feet north of Cold Bay. Uh, once you get away from any re remnant ice there uh, along the shoreline of Bristol Bay. Across the area of Friday, variable winds 10 knots around Kodiak Island with waves running a few feet. Otherwise, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots. Waves four to seven feet on the 
North Pacific side and two to four feet on the Bering side. The Aleutians, winds also seasonally coming uh, down, not as strong as uh, what they have been through the spring. 15 to 20 knots, generally out of the west northwest. Waves running about six to seven feet on the North Pacific side and four to six feet on the Bering side. For Friday, winds turn southerly over the eastern Aleutians, 15 to 20 knots. Variable 10 knots in the central Aleutians around Adak and Atka. And north, uh, northeasterly, 20 to 25 knots west of uh, Atka across the western Aleutians where waves could be running as high as 10 to 12 feet. Along the southwest coast, north winds continue over the remnant ice there across the northern uh, Bering Sea between uh, the Yukon Delta, uh, north of uh, Nunavik Island to St. Matthew, 20 to 25 knots. Waves as high as seven feet in the vicinity of St. Matthew. And then on Friday, winds are going to try to turn around more toward the south, southeast along the southwest coast and there through Norton Sound at about 15 to 20 knots and the ice will continue to melt, especially there along the edges. And then finally, across uh, the far north, strongest winds are gonna be through the lower Chuck GC at 25 to 30 knots, turning northerly through uh, the Bering Strait to the north side of St. Lawrence. And uh, along the Arctic coast, Utkiavik through Kaktovik, winds will be northeasterly 15 to 20 knots with still ice in place. For Friday, winds along the far uh, eastern Arctic coast out a variable there kind of north to westerly 10 knots. But again, running uh, northeasterly 25 to 30 knots from Wainwright down through the Bering Strait and turning northerly, especially on the north side of St. Lawrence Island where winds could be as high as 35 knots. And low pressure will be in the Western Gulf early Thursday morning. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1 800 WX Brief for a formal pre flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.